the speakers. It's an installation designed to inhabit public spaces and via a gathering of different voices transpose the experience of another person's reality into ours. Very encouraging. It's about the process of giving voice and about juxtaposing these voices with the real world around us. I passed the street from Parliament. One gets the impression that she suffered an earthquake, smoke, rubble, chaos. This piece is a playful tool to reimagine the public space. I show my papers, explain the situation. Our survives for now. My passport was taken in the Senate. I hang in Atmosphere in streets just off Tahrir so strange. Pockets of normal life dotted among the debris. Elijah Zawa. Yeah. People sitting with shisha on a road torn up for stones to hurl. Streets empty of traffic, but then the occasional taxi. Tahrir. Field hospital of grim sight. Wounded constantly being ferried in on motorbikes from clashes on Mum. Mohammed Mahmoud. For these trials, I've been using recordings of different people reading the tweets from Tahrir Square during the revolution. But it's important to say this is just a starting point. Uh, it's the beginning, a model to work with. What they are is a, a form of audio description in a way. People are describing their reality. And what I want to do with this piece is transpose these different realities. And what's interesting about this is it's live. You know, coincidences happen. These dancers happen to be animating the space at the same time. But the uh, hunters walking in between and interacting with these voices started to listen to the speakers whilst watching the dancers whilst they animated the space. It could be that you watch people just walking. It could be that you watch the world around you and these speakers become a soundtrack to that space. By bringing people together, this is a big part of this piece, gathering people together, uh, part of that process is understanding different realities, understanding different public spaces, understanding different peoples, different cultures, what's happening in different cities around the world. And what happens when we transpose these other spaces, these other realities, a revolution that's happening in one city, what happens when that's transposed into our city? And this idea of a revolution, it could be reoccupying a library and ban it, or about the freedom of speech. The choice of site will affect the content, and I want it to be, to be a symbiosis between the, the content that we focus on and the site. The process of getting local people to read aloud someone else's reality is really important. I know this is silly, but my foot really hurts. I was here today. Tomorrow you should be with us. The choice of site is quite important to this piece because what it has to do is reach out and interact with its environment with things going on around it. So being isolated in a backyard like this doesn't work so well. In a place where there's lots of other acts and lights and sounds going on it can be a bit too distracting. So it's getting that balance right. <laughs> The 3D design decisions in this piece uh, are about juxtaposition as well, the plasticky tech of the speakers and the plastic reality of Twitter juxtaposed with these rough cut pipes from underwater networks. The online with real fires, uh, the virtual meeting with fresh mint tea, light and sound, how the two interplay together. Can you have voices that appear like lights in the night and then disappear again? Molotov. 
what happens when we only exist as voices. I quite like the idea that we're creating a flock of voices, a school of speakers. I've discovered that the process of getting people to actually read these tweets, this actual process, is really powerful and quite useful for those people to understand someone else's reality. Uh, recently on Radio 4, the diary and blog of the Pakistani schoolgirl Malala Yousafzai, who was shot in the head by the Taliban for campaigning for girls' education, was read by a, a gathering of young British schoolgirls. And they found that the actual process of actually orating and of actually reading her blog was incredibly powerful for them, and I think also for the listeners too, much more so than just reading her blog. However, that works beautifully for radio. The thing that attracts me about Twitter and public space is that tweets offer lots of little snippets and bites of conversation, which collectively makes up something much more versatile to enable people to be creative in the process by which they collage between these spoken perceptions of others and their own perceptions.